everybody and welcome to Weight Loss Wednesday. I'm Chef AJ, the creator of the Ultimate Weight Loss Program and this is where I show you recipes from my book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, which will help you achieve healthy, permanent, and sustainable weight loss. Today I'm making one of my very favorite and most popular recipes from the book, the best beanless bean burgers. And I'll explain how that recipe came to be in a moment, but first let's get started with the recipe. I've already preheated my oven and I've already preheated my saute pan and I put in my chopped onions and I'm just gonna stir those every now and then until I get a nice browning and caramelization on them. And you do not need oil to saute. You can watch one of my videos on YouTube, how to caramelize onions without oil, but trust me, you don't need anything. You need a good pan and sometimes a little bit of liquid if it starts to sift. And what I'm gonna be using for my liquid today is part of the recipe. These are a can of salt-free fire roasted tomatoes in BPA-free cans. If it starts to brown or stick, I'll just put a little bit of the liquid in there. Oops, forgot the garlic. Can't have a recipe without garlic. I like to buy everything pre-chopped, pre-everything, because I'm lazy and I don't mind spending a few extra pennies for convenience. But feel free to always do things as much from scratch as possible. Now, while that's sauteing, every now and then I'll just tend to it and give it a nice little stir. If I feel it's drying out, put a little bit of the liquid from the can. I am gonna cut the rest of my vegetables. Ooh, that's looking good. You can buy onions already chopped everywhere now, from your Kroger to your Trader Joe's to your Whole Foods, or you can chop them yourself. So what I'm gonna do, and this is actually an easy way to chop your onion, I'm going to chop my other ingredients in the food processor fitted with the S blade, named the S blade because it looks somewhat like the letter S. And the first thing I'm going to do is put all my cilantro in there to get it chopped. When you're chopping herbs in a food processor, always make sure it's dry or you'll end up with a pesto. This is a real easy way to do it. If you don't like cilantro, you can use Italian parsley. You can leave this out entirely. These are sort of a Mexican style burger. You can take the stems off or leave them on. And certain vegetables, vegetables, and certain herbs like rosemary and thyme, you definitely don't want to use those stems. They're very woody. Basil too, but mint, cilantro, you can sometimes get a little stem in. So I'm just chopping up my carrot. Well, and I'm going to do that in the food processor. This is all going to get sautéed, so it doesn't have to be perfect to chop. But every now and then, don't forget about your onion. If it starts to dry out, put a little bit of liquid from the can. You already need to heat just a little bit. It would be nice if they sold onions already sautéed. Because every good recipe, especially SOS-free recipes, as I said before, it all starts with an onion. I don't know how people get things flavorful without onion and without onion and garlic. And always have a little bit of water ready too. Does the same thing. All right, so I'm going to chop my carrot. Processors usually come with a blade also for shredding. But I just wanted these chopped as finely as possible because they're going into the burger. They're going to be sauteed as well. And then my last thing is my red bell pepper. I just want to show you how to make what's called a stabilizing cut. Round things can be dangerous to cut because they move around. So what you do is you make one cut, so now it's not moving around anymore. That's called the stabilizing cut, throwing that in there. And then I just cut off the side so that I'm avoiding the seed packet, which I am going to save and put in my scrap bag. And I showed you, not my scrap bag, my scrap bag, and I showed you before how to make your own broth from scraps. So what 
we're going to do now. The onion looks nice and brown. Just add a little bit more water just to make sure. I turned the heat down. I shouldn't have done that, but I didn't want to have it burn while I was doing other things. I like using a lot of garlic. Whatever the recipe calls for, always willing to do more garlic. Now where's my little thing? I love that little tool and I can't find it. So you know what we're gonna have to do is use the old fashioned garlic press. Just like they did in the old days. The tupper ones. The Tupperware is so much easier. Okay, so I'm gonna add my carrots now. Starts to dry out, I just add a little bit of liquid. These are so good. These really are the best veggie burgers I've personally had, and I've received many compliments from people who said that as well. Since I can't find my little garlic chopper machine, you know what I'm going to do? Is I'm just going to put it all in the food processor. Why not? Make it easy. Why dirty another tool? What I don't like about these is they're so hard to clean. So now I've got everything ready. I could have done this before I started filming this. That's called mise en place, but I wanted to have a little something to do. So here's my bell pepper mixed with my garlic. I am what they call the messy chef. Whenever I feel it starts to dry out, I just add a little liquid. I always add the more dense vegetables first to give it more time to cook, which is the carrot. So now I'm going to add the bell pepper and the garlic. And while that's cooking, I'm going to mix in my other ingredients to make the burger. <laughs> so in this bowl, I have my roasted hen and yam with the peel off and my black rice. I'm using organic forbidden rice and I really encourage you to try this. It's delicious just on its own or with vegetables. This is just a wonderful rice. And the reason I'm using it is because I wanted to create a bean burger that looked and tastes like a bean burger. And the only way I could do that was using black rice. My original Chipotle bean burger, which you can watch on my television show, Healthy Living with Chef AJ, that aired on Foodie TV, but you can find on YouTube now, is either episode 105 or 106 when I did burgers, fries, and shakes. I already show you how to make the Chipotle bean burger. But I have a lot of clients that are either allergic to legumes, either they get an anaphylactic reaction, or they have an intolerance, or IBS, or SIBO, so I wanted to create a burger that looked and tasted like the bean burger, that didn't have beans, and by using black rice, it did it perfectly. So it's always best to chill the batter in advance, but we don't have time to do that now, so at least I chilled the rice and the hana yam. This is what a hana yam looks like. It's sort of almost like a potato on the outside, but if you scrape it, you can see it's white on the inside. You have to do that because sometimes these are orange on the inside. Now you technically could use the orange ones. I don't care for the taste of the orange yam, which is called the, the jewel, no, excuse me, it's called the garnet yam. These are more like the jewels, the hanna. If you like them, you can use them. I find them too mushy and wet. I think they're great in the butterscotch pudding that I showed you in a previous episode. And I think they're great as sweet potato fries, but for eating, unless I'm mashing them, I don't really care for the taste. I love the white or the Hanna or the Jersey yam. I eat one of these every single day this size for lunch. This weighs about two pounds. This is my lunch every day with broccoli. When I cook it, it goes down to about a pound and a half. It tastes best roasted. And to that, I'm gonna add my nutritional yeast. This is unfortified. Nutritional yeast is very controversial. Dr. Goldhammer doesn't allow it you can leave it out. If you like it, make sure you get the unfortified. You don't want it fortified with folic acid and B vitamins if you're using it. And then of course my seasonings. If you've watched anything I've done, you know I always measure my seasonings in advance. For recipes I make frequently, it's just easier. Always smell it, even if you've labeled it. So I've got all that in there. I'm gonna add my cilantro. And again, you don't have to use that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use food service gloves so that I can get it really, really mixed up. First, I'm going to add 
the tomato just to finish it off. I'm going to turn the heat off and I'm going to add this to the mixture. Now this is a little more complicated than some of my other recipes. There's a few more steps, but it's definitely worth it and these freeze wonderfully. This is one of the few recipes that tastes just as good from the freezer as it does when it's first made. I love this nonstick pan. I've had it for a really long time from Pampered Chef. Nothing sticks and it cleans up very easily. Just make sure you never use a, 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 like scouring pads up. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on my gloves and mix everything around so it's fully incorporated. Alexa, stop. Isn't it great, Alexa? One time I was doing a live broadcast, Weight Loss Wednesday, and somehow, I don't even want to say that name, or somebody said it, that, and boy, everybody's Alexa went off. So here we go. What's good about food service gloves is that they are very hygienic. Always make sure that you get the latex free, especially if you're cooking for somebody it has food allergies. So in a perfect world, we want to chill everything for an hour or two or even overnight. But like I said, I pre-chilled the sweet potato and the rice, so it should stick together very nicely. The other thing I do, is, since I make this recipe often, and as you know, I make sweet potatoes every day for lunch, I always cook extra and I measure out the amount I need for recipes like this or the blueberry mill oat muffin so that I don't have to go ahead and cook sweet potatoes. And so you can see that because the rice is black, it's going to color the burger black, so it will look like a black bean burger. Hence the best beanless bean burger. Now the chili powder that I used in this recipe is this one. It's a salt-free chili powder from Whole Foods, and it's very mild. Keep in mind that spices, especially blends like chili powder and curry powder, apple pie spice, pumpkin pie spice, blends very greatly. And if you don't like it, it's gonna make your recipe not taste very good. So I always encourage people to taste their spice blends. This is a very, very mild chili powder. A lot of chili powders, like the wonderful one from Penzi's called, I think it's called uh, Chili 9000, which is salt-free. It's very good, but it's very spicy. Similarly, the uh, Benson's gourmet seasoning, the, the one that's the chili powder, I can't think of the bravado, is good, but it's very, very spicy. So if you're using a very spicy one, you might want to use less. So now I've got my batter all mixed up. Again, if you have time, please chill it first. Well, we, we ain't got time for that. So now we're going to measure it out. And I like to use a half a cup measuring cup. That makes the perfect burger. Half a cup. And then I kind of just gently round it with my hand. You can get a burger press. You can certainly use a burger press for veggie burgers. You notice I'm putting it on a sill pad. It's a non-stick silicone baking mat. The trick to these burgers, to have them not fall apart, is to cook them long enough on one side that you can easily, very easily flip them. And so depending on your oven, and how big you made the burgers, that's gonna be at least 30 minutes. It could be as long as 45 minutes until they're easily flippable. People love these. They love these by themselves, crumbled up over a salad. You can roll them small into meatball shapes and cook them in your air fryer. They're delicious that way. You can make potato waffle. That's another recipe in my book and use that as buns. What we like to do is get that lettuce that's, uh, I can't think of the name of it, but it's like a, it grows like with the little dirt thing on it, and, and it, it, the burger fits perfectly in there. And we like to put our salt-free mustard and our homemade ketchup and slices of red onion and tomato on it. Uh, my husband likes to put pickles on his, and they are just good. And I, may, I serve these to company. Regular people will eat these, I'm telling you. That's how good they are. And the thing is, is they look almost exactly like the beanless, the real burger, the one made with black bean, and they taste pretty much like it, but you won't have the GI distress because there's no beans if you're somebody that gets a little distress from the bean. And again, you can make these bigger or smaller. I'm just trying to get 12 on the plate. 
it sometimes makes a little bit more, like 15. And if it does that, I'll show you how I roll it into balls and cook it in the air fryer for nice little meatballs. There's also an Italian burger in my book if you don't like Mexican flavors. One of the reasons that I do so much with Mexican flavors is because one, in salt-free cooking, it's one of the easiest things to do is, is to make things without salt when you're using Mexican flavors. Also, I've grown up 50 years in California and that's what I'm used to eating. So that's what I really like is Mexican Tex-Mex. So that's what you do. And uh, once these cool, I put them in Ziploc bags and then I just microwave them for a minute or two on each side. But these really are the perfect burger. If, you're, if your hands, they should not stick to your hand, but if for some reason they did, just use wet hands. Okay, two more. And make a double batch. If you're going to all the trouble, make a double batch so you can have some in the freezer. You'll be glad you did. And always make sure you preheat the oven and always make sure your oven is correct. I really recommend you get a $10 oven thermometer. Not every oven is calibrated regardless of what you think or paid for it or what good, how good it is. People are so surprised when they do that how far off their oven is. So there we go, we've got 12 incredible burgers. I'm gonna stick that in my preheated oven. Set the timer. These are big, thick ones for 45 minutes. And while we're doing that, I am going to roll out oh, a few balls. And then I'm going to just stick in the air fryer because it'll take less time. I'm going to use a little cookie scoop with the remainder of this. These are great. You can just pop these in your mouth and they get really crunchy because you're using the air fryer and they cook on all sides. These little scoops are great. They're great for so many things, especially if you bake or if you have my first book on process, the truffles on page 170. These are perfect for making those. I wish you guys could smell how good this smells. Promise you. And don't worry if you can't find the Hannah Yam. I mean, I think they're worth ordering online. You can get them on certain websites and Amazon. They just taste better to me. A lot of people want to use the Japanese, and you could, but they're so sweet. The Japanese and the Hawaiian are so sweet. The Stokes are purple, and they could work, but you make it a funny color. So if you can get the Hannah, get those. If not, just use the orange ones. Just know that it's going to be a little bit mushier, and the flavor will be fine. You know, when I teach at Rancho La Puerta in Mexico, I always do this recipe, and that's all they have is that yam, is the regular orange one, and it's fine. People still love it. I guess you could say I'm just a sweet potato snob. So if I were to make those in burgers, I probably would have got 15, but I couldn't fit them on. So I'm going to put these in the air fryer. I'm going to bake these, and then when we come back, I'll show you how it looks. So after about 45 minutes, see if you can easily flip them. If they stick, bake them a little longer. That's perfect. That's when you turn them over. If you turn them over before you can flip them easily, they'll still be good, but they'll break. So it's okay if you have to jiggle a little bit, but if it's too hard, then cook them another 10 minutes on one side. Again, it's just gonna depend how big and thick you made them. Little ones, probably 30 minutes would be enough. Big ones, more like 45, 50, till you can nicely flip them. And be better if you have two oven mitts, but I can't find the second one. Just, there we go. One of them falls apart, you can use it as a filling. Sometimes you can even put it back together. I'm not even using a proper baking pan, as I mentioned. I'm, everything is packed, so I'm, there we go. Perfect. Getting those middle ones. 
ones can be challenging. And then I'm gonna cook them for about another 10 or 15 minutes on this side till it's dry and crispy the way I like them. Kind of like everything well done. See, now that got a little bit smushy, so I just put it back together, even it out. There we go. This is the hardest part, the flipping. And that's where the chilling is gonna make a difference, guys. I didn't chill these, remember? Because I wanted to get them in, but chilling the batter several hours or overnight really will make a difference. I don't know why, but it does. There we go. Oh, that middle one's the more difficult. And if you don't wanna bother like this, just do meatballs. Like I showed you the air fryer look at how oops how easy these were these will be nice and crunchy oh my god they make a great appetizer or side dish you can kind of hear how crunchy they are that's my favorite thing to do is make little meatballs with them yum 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 you can serve it with the compliant ketchup from my book and we'll show you the burgers when they're done so i cook them for about another 20 minutes and you want to just make sure yep they're nice and dry to the touch so now i'm going to take them out of the oven whoops i need a new pair of gloves and we'll just put them on a plate just get all the fixins you would for regular burgers. If you are gonna freeze these, please make sure that you cool them first. And I like to freeze, I eat about two of these, so I like to freeze two in a little ziplock. And again, if you do chill the batter, it really will come out perfect and you won't struggle and falling apart. And I prefer to use the Silpat, Silpat than the parchment paper. I think it's more, this is hot, less likely to stick. So that one might fall apart. It happens, but most of them won't. And you can make one of the two ketchups from the book so you don't have to have the salt. And if you can eat these, make the original version. You can watch me make that on Healthy Living with Chef AJ. For one more on the plate. There we go. So, give these a try. The best beanless bean burger on page 166 of The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss. I'm Chef AJ. Thanks for watching. I make healthy, taste delicious.